You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. And it is very appropriate that it's a wacka doodle Wednesday today because it is also my mama's birthday. Booyah, 87 years old, and she's still going strong, and God knows she's wacka doodle after raising all of us. <laughs> Because we are a pack of wackadoodles. That's for darn sure. Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLMRadio.xyz site, RLM TuneIn Radio Station, RLM Internet Radio Station, and lots of other RLM and num and num and num and num places, including YouTube later. Oh, wait. Yeah, Spreaker's going on right now, too. Uh, YouTube later, as well as BitChute. And real quick, I got to get to the, excuse me, hiccup. That was fun. <laughs> or not. Oh, well. Got to get over here to Twitter real quick. Because, man, I just got to tell you. I got my first critique. Or my first critique on Twitter, I'll say. I've gotten lots of critiques. And I've gotten lots of them that were not so pleasant. But this one was actually enjoyable. I didn't mind it too horrible much. But, let's see. Where's that at now? Oh, from, yeah, from someone over on Twitter. Congratulations, Grammy. You win the prize on the most annoying and pretentious alt-radio host ever to hit the stream. When you come on, I tune out. Just wanted to tell a dork what she already knows. Well, thank you, hon. I appreciate that. And I let them know. Thank you, hon. That's the nicest thing anybody said to me all day. Which, you know, I haven't really talked to anybody. But, that's mincing. Yeah being picky thank you barman for tweeting me out letting everybody know that i i am so pretentious and i'm and i'm how is that yeah annoying and pretentious i much prefer annoying and pretentious well you know when you got to strive for something do it right up right that's what i always say so i'm going to be the most annoying and pretentious person i can be or at least well maybe not i don't know so let me see yes Yes, what's that? Hi! Hi, Java Doctor! Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is saying hey, yay! Great, Grammy. Yeah, my mom is awesome! Okay, let me see. Thank you, guys. I will be sure to let them know that, or let mom know that you told her happy birthday. I'm sure she got oodles and gobbins of phone calls just from us kids because there's 10 of us. Okay, now that I am, I'm pretty well done with Twitter, I think. Yeah, I've got my critique. I've done my tweeting. And my stalkers are staying pretty steady. So, hey, it's all good. So, I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter because, yeah. Although, I do have something here from Capitano Zani that I'm going to get to later in the show, but I do have a few other things that I want to get to first. But while I'm saying, hey there, hi there, ho there, over here on this effing site, got a reprieve, booyah, server fees paid to August the 23rd. So, y'all dig deep. Enough for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. You know, okay, five bucks. Chip in five bucks. We'd really appreciate it. Help pay the server fees over here on freedomsnetwork.com. And thank you, Grimner, for sharing me over here. I really appreciate everything that you do, hun. You have no idea because I know how much I don't do. <laughs> I also see Loki Luck 3 was over here as well as Bob Renner and Cowboy Tech. And y'all have been posting things like crazy. And looky there, Plastic Straw Ban and Santa Barbara has jail time punishment. Booyah! You know, all you plastic straw drinkers, holy crap, I got a plastic straw. Thank God I'm not in Santa Barbara. Although, what I'm using it for is I am drinking, I made a fresh batch of 
Bing Cherry and Ginger Water today. And I put just a little bit of honey in it to give it a little more sweetener because those cherries were a little on the tart side. So, but it's very, very yummy and made with well water. Booyah! Okay, where else do I need to go besides crazy? Over here on Fakey Book. Aw, Key Cats. Hi, Key Cats. Um, don't really see anybody over here on Fake Book. So I did see something just a little bit ago over in the RLM chat about, um, yeah, Suckyberg lost some chump change. Well, chump change for him, not necessarily for the rest of us. 16.8 billion in the blink of an eye as fakey book plunges. Ah. Well, you know there are an awful lot of social sites out there now. Although I do believe the more social sites you get out there, the more antisocial some people are. You know, there's some people out there that wow, you know, all they do is just go out there to nitpick. It's like, "Really, hun? Do you not have anything else to do? Is this how you get your pleasure?" Okay, well, I guess if that's what rolls you, because you know what? You're on the internet. I can turn you off. That's the way it works. Okay, uh, over here on Minds. Thank you, RLM, for sharing me over on Minds. I actually did get off my duffel and share it as well. Ooh, and ooh, all kinds of... Th that thing scrolls too fast for me. Damn it. Okay, so I've done... Effin site, Facebook, Minds, Twitter. I guess that means I need to go to the one place that you need to be if you're going to give me static. Let me know that I'm annoying and obnoxious, please. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's what I live for. I do not suffer from insanity. I enjoy every moment of it. It's those around me that have a tendency to run away, run away. Vinny, I see you just jumped in. Okay, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, and the tweetinest fool ever. He's always tweeting all kind of stuff, although I secretly think that Grimmy's behind him. Did I say that out loud? I think I did. I also see Grimner is here, who is the RLM god. Um, oh, really? Okay. Uh, ah, and Capitano Zanni is back. Back. Okay. Uh, Miss Moose Girl is here. Hey, lovely Moose Girl. I saw you earlier in the chitty chat. How are you doing? Um, hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day. I also see Asmo is in the chat, as well as the lovely Beth Z, who has been in the chat. Well, every time I've checked it today, I haven't really been cussing and discussing much once I went out and started mowing and then wound up having to stop mowing because I got a flat tire. Damn it. Damn it. Sucks when your riding mower gets a flat tire. Oh, well. Is 90 plus degrees anyway. I really didn't feel like mowing much anymore. I also see Chalcedony is here as well as a lovely Chloe. And looky there, Don underscore C or D underscore C. I know that's I be Don C, but hi, Don. How are you doing, hon? And uh, I'm here. Oh, and look, I be Don C is also here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. Yay, Capitano Zani. I'm so glad you can hear. Yay. Um, JJ's is here. Hi, JJ's. How you doing, sweetheart? I also see Juana Taco is here, as well as Meister Brower. Woody, how you doing, hon? Um, let's see. Kate, the lovely Kate from down in Florida is here, as well as the lovely Rain. I might be getting some of that this evening. That would be nice. I did get the ditches mode, the draining di drainage ditches mode, before the tire went flat, so hey. Bonus points for me. Uh, so if it rains, it's okay. Not going to hurt nothing. Let's see. Where am I at? RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Rob Works, who fired up that bubbler. Thank you ever so much, Rob Works, for that bubbler. Getting a cybernetic hit the way we go. Um, trust no one is here who is being annoying just because you can't. You know, it's called being spiteful, hon. When someone wants you to do something and you do the opposite, that's, uh, yeah. Um, oh, why, thank you. Birthday cake, yay! 
But Sock, it's not my birthday. It's my mom's birthday. Not my birthday yet, although mine is close. Bottoms up? <laughs> uh, I'd be a little topsy-turvy, wouldn't I? Oops. Although that probably wouldn't affect the way I um, do the radio. No, probably not at all. Some people seem to think I talk out my ass anyway. That's okay. Hi, Phantom 2. How are you doing, sweetheart? I also see Capitano Zani. I know who that guy is. Cycles. Cycles is logged in. Hey, Cycles. As well as Colfax 101. Looky there. Dakota is here as well as Death Spawn. You know, th speaking of Dakota, there is a place in, uh, in Alliance, Nebraska. It's a geothermal... Um, partially underground greenhouse. Going to be going up there one of these weekends to check that bad boy out because, yeah, that looks just way cool. So I want to go check that bad boy out and see if get some get some pointers on how to do this stuff because, yeah, that's the next big thing is, at least for me, next big thing I'm going to try and do is is get me a big old geothermal greenhouse. Maybe not big, but, you know, geothermal greenhouse so I can keep my ginger and my turmeric going longer than my normal growing season is out here in the middle of the boonies. Uh, let's see, where am I at? Death Spawn is here as well as Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. Kozu is also logged in as well as Moy, 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 Moy. I only got two poxes in the chat. Poxified and Poxiphone. Pribib is here. Pribib. <laughs> That's kind of fun to say. Pribib. Yeah, I like that one. Hi, Pompa Pon Sauce and Sock Puppet. Thank you ever so much, Sock Puppet and Locknar, for the wonderful wishes. You're so awesome. I will extend them to my mommy. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the F Bominator, Skittle. And Skittle, I got something just for you. And Capitano Vin uh, Zanny sent it to me. So, booyah. Actually, just, yeah. Didn't really send it to me. Just tweeted it and mentioned me. And so, yeah, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Because I can. Okay. Over here on Mines, let me see. I got some notifications. Has anybody else that's over on Mines noticed that there's an awful lot of... Um, apparently, the Vietnamese have found Mines. I'm not complaining other than the fact that I don't read Vietnamese. And it's like, son of a bitch. I really would like to know what they're saying on that. That looks kind of interesting. But, once again, I don't read it or speak it. So, damn it. Damn it. Okay, so, where do I want to go first? It is a wackadoodle Wednesday. So, let me see here. Let's go with some stuff that's just totally, totally whacked. No, I don't want you to send me notifications. What is it with websites these days? We would like to be able to send you notifications. Allow or deny. No. No, thanks, but no thanks. And no, I don't want to sign up for your newsletter either. S sorry, I have you in my bookmarks bar. I really don't want to have to go there as well. So, this is from wakeupworld.com. Four suppressed superfoods with amazing medicinal potential. Yeah, why is all this stuff suppressed? Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm thinking follow the money. Find out who benefits from this information being suppressed. That's what I think. So, despite their potent or their potent healing powers, few speak of the medicinal value of these substances. Today, information on curatives and healthy foods are constantly suppressed, and substances are even prohibited, like cannabis, which re uh, remains turmeric's fiercest competition for its balancing and curative effects. I really don't like to say curative anymore, because then the big old FDA jumps in and goes, dun, 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 we're going to save you from yourselves, and in the process, save big pharma so that we can keep getting our money under the table. But, <clears throat> these things don't cure, they are just proper tools to give to your body so it can heal itself. How's that sound? 
So, in fact, the system suppression of information concerning the curative effects of foods and herbs like cannabis, turmeric, garlic, ginger, and habanero. Ooh, habanero, them's, them's some spices, spice and meatballs. Well, okay, little peppers, but still. Wow! That's kind of warm stuff. Um... And for a few simple but powerful examples, that's just a few simple but powerful examples. See, I'm, I'm reading and I need to stop with my in interjecting stuff. So, as well as sim uh, systems of herbalism, traditional medicine, and anything natural and not pharmacological, yeah, those things are being suppressed. Um, it's been so successful during the rise of um, allopathy and big pharma that rejecting natural remedies as alternative has become an automatic response among most in our society. So much so that to suggest their powerful medicinal potential in public is to be labeled a crazy fringe dweller or some such parallel. One thing I read several months back uh, John D. Rockefeller, you know, Daddy Rockefeller that started a lot of bullshit rolling here in USA, or at least in my mind is credited with that. And yeah, in my mind, yeah. In any case, um, he started out as a snake oil salesman. I mean, you know, well, he didn't really start out, at, but he did. He tried his hand at snake oil salesman and what he was selling was poison. And so, you know, I wonder if maybe since he couldn't really make a shitload of money off of that stuff, that's when he decided to um, do the other route because he, yeah, you look him up and he has done it. He did an awful lot of diabolical, nasty things back in the day and his children followed in his footsteps. But, um, yeah. It's no wonder he went and started pushing for big pharma stuff because he, <laughs> he was continuing the poison part. And snake oil salesman, he just had a white lab coat to do it. So, to carry on with this, the following superfoods are adaptogenic balancers and curatives I have come across on my journey as a crazy writer, a health nut, a truth seeker, and the son of a farmer and a nurse. See? Number one, chaga, um, which is pictured above, and it is like a shroom growing out of a tree. It's a fungi. Um, chaga and other medicinal mushrooms are super extremely powerful modes for increasing vitality and achieving healthy and balanced states. Now, chaka extract is one of the most powerful sources of antioxidants on the planet and notably has demonstrated anti-cancer properties. Now, chaka causes cell death of malformed cells without hurting the body otherwise, preventing the growth of cancer cells. It has also been shown to protect cellular DNA and stimulate the immune system. In countries where the allopathic oligarchy has less of a stranglehold hold on the uh, bounds of medicine and medical research, chaga is both well-researched and medically prescribed, as is the reishi mushroom. And in Russia, in particular, chaga is widely utilized for its medicinal value and is also being integrated with extracts of birch, the, the only tree chaga will grow on in nature. Ah, how cool. And to potentially enhance the health effects of the chaga extract. I did not know that it only grew on birch. That's cool. Now, personally, I very much enjoy consuming chaga with ginseng. Really? I haven't tried that. I haven't tried chaga. I have tried ginseng. So, if your needs are medicinal, I encourage you to do the research to see if chaga, which is medicinal mushrooms and or ginseng, might be appropriate for you. I would like to get some ginseng root and try my hand at that because so far my turmeric and ginger if the storms don't get it, is doing pretty well, considering the area. I'm, I'm tickled that it's doing as well as it is. Now, on a side note, they have, this is one of those times when tradition remains frustratingly ahead of science. The healing potential 
of mycotherapy or mushroom medicine is vast and while it is only just beginning to be understood by science the scientific evidence is already inarguable and yet psychoactive mushrooms remain widely prohibited by law regardless of their medicinal value even though chaga itself is not deemed illegal the sense of taboo surrounding mushroom medicine in our society has greatly diminished its therapeutic use and you know a lot of these taboos just like ooh that Mexican weed those dirty Mexicans bringing that darn weed the killer weed devil's lettuce that bad juju stuff yeah you know the propaganda system has worked amazingly well on that amazingly well got to give them props for that they they knew what they were doing no two shits about it now number two is almonds and apricots in combination the writer was in a Turkish cafe in San Francisco sometime after first learning about the ex learning about and experiencing internal alchemy of the almond and the apricot they had a little apricot and almond pastry and I ordered one with my coffee I said oh the almond and apricot there's a that's the magic I'll have one of those and they looked at me like I just told them a secret in their native language on picking up their jaws they inquired how I knew about the magic of the almond and apricot well the almond and apricot combination included in my pastry is used in traditional Chinese medicine the simple combination has long been considered a cancer cure and it is associated with longevity since one of the most well-aged peoples of the world Han Tzu Ying ate almonds and apricots frequently now according to what I have experienced the author of this article it is also a powerful bowel cleanser oh great be advised the combination does not cause diarrhea per se but it increases the elimination so don't do this if you're going to be going on a road trip now Western scientists have also util utilized extracts to prove the effectiveness of apricot and almond however the curative properties could could not be repl uh, replicated by using only extracted compounds in isolation and no everything has to work together everything that I have read so far tells you that you can't just pull out these different components from all these things and say this is what cures you this is what no it's the whole package it all works together just like a proper diet it all works together to fuel your body to help keep you healthy now traditional Chinese medicine noted that the alchemy of the digestion process pot potentiated their medicinal value and extracts would thus not work okay number three is one of those where I'm just gonna go what Shilajit, S H I L A J I T. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but I'm going to go with Shilajit. It literally means mountain tar. It is a thick, sticky substance that seeps out of the rocks in the high mountains of Asia, containing at least 85 minerals in their ionic form. And it has been revered in. I, 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 Ayurveda? Ayurveda. Okay. Man, that's some fun words to say in this one. For it's been revered for millennia as the best carrier of energy and nutrition into the human body. Now, a Vedic expression in regard to Shilajit goes something like this. There is no disease which Shilajit cannot defeat if consumed soon enough. And from the writer's own personal experience, they started to think that Shilajit is the actual philosopher's stone for internal alchemy. This stuff is straight up illegal in Canada. Apparently, there are a lot of poorly produced Shilajit extracts on the global market, some containing lead. 
and from what the author understands, it largely depends on how this extract is handled as to whether it contains toxins or not. But with ancient history, legends of Shilajit abound, and modern science still has many questions about it, such as whether it is derived from a mineral or vegetable source, and how it behaves as an oil, but is water-soluble. And what is undeniable is that it is packed with minerals like no other substance on the planet and generally has the effect of enhancing whatever herbal medicine or food one consumes with it. Hmm. Now, there are only very few disorders that the author has come across which are not helped but hindered by the gentle inclusion of shilajit in one's diet. However, again, this author encourages you to do your own research about it. It's also known as mumyo in Russia, and check and see if it's right for you. And finally, number four, nothing but the elements. The most powerful thing that we can do for ourselves very often is nothing. Being quiet in the four elements without trying to do anything is essentially one of the most powerful healing and strengthening practices you can undertake. Spend some time doing nothing and consuming nothing but the four elements in their purest form. For fire, go out and play in the sun. Sunlight triggers healing potential in our bodies in hundreds of different ways. And if you're sensitive to sunlight, minimalize exposure and wear a hat. There's always the potential of using too much of any medicine, including heliotherapy. So please, peeps, you know, don't go into any of this stuff with the mindset, if a little bit will do me good, then a lot will do me a lot better. No, that's not the case. You need to get that balance. The next element, water. Drink pure water. Fast for a time and consume water only. Numerous immuno... Immu da -da -da. Let me say this again. Numerous immunological functions begin when we go without food for certain time periods, like a 16-hour day or one day or two-day water fasts, all can be extremely beneficial. And I have kind of, I've done that a time or two, and yeah, although I'm ravenous by the time I do eat, but I don't eat that much because it doesn't take much to fill me up then. So, number three, air. Breathe and play in the fresh air, which is hard to do sometimes these days. Do nothing but breathe in nature. Be at the mountaintop, beachhead, public park, or wherever is accommodating. With me, it's outside my north door on my glider rocker, either first thing in the morning to listen to the bird song or at night to look at the stars. And lastly, earth. Take off your rubber shoes and connect with the earth. The healing feel-good energy of the planet is as easy to connect with as removing your shoes. We are chemical electrical beings and walking barefoot, or at least with shoes that do not disconnect us from literally being grounded into the electromagnetism of the earth, creates measurable chemical and electrical benefits. I personally love going barefoot. The only time I wear my flip-flops anymore is uh, when I'm going into areas where here there be stickers because I know I haven't gotten them all pulled yet. But around the yard, you betcha, I'm wearing my flip-flops. So, very interesting, and this was written by Ethan Indigo Smith. Thank you, Ethan. See, isn't that just wacky? All these different things that they don't want you to know about, and everybody else's. What's that? 
Oh. <laughs> you guys are so <coughs> Excuse me, so funny. What are you guys bullshitting about up here? Dun 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 I'm catching up in the chat. Okay. So I will put this over here on the F side as well. And then I will move on to I did really find quite a few things for today. Go figure. Um Okay. Let me find I oh man, I love these little emojis. They make life so easy. Thank you, Graham, once again for all these little emojis over here on the effing site. Okay. Now that we have done the lovely, those natural things that are there to help you, how about this one from naturalblaze.com? This was over on Mines, I believe, in, um, what page was that? Uh, Natural Cures page over on Mines. I don't remember who shared it, but... Um, GMO giant BASF unveiled as member of Organic Trade Association. See, just because something says organic doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you. So, this um, was by Heather Cal uh, Callaghan, who is the editor over here. So yesterday, a report by Living Maxwell revealed that the often overlooked GMO chemical giant BASF is actually a member of the U.S. Organic Trade Association. Yes, it's called Controlled Opposition. This realization sent waves of ire throughout the worldwide community of organic advocates. And as a result of this revelation, major organic food producer Nature's Path has left the organization as a form of protest. You really need to, you know, it's, what's really cool is if you live somewhere where you can do this, purchase locally from people that you know don't use pesticides or herbicides you know those nasty chemical ones I mean there are there are things to deter the bugs and to deter the weeds but yeah you don't want all that nasty chemical shit and um, buy local as often as you can so this goes on to say uh, from Living Maxwell Report Upset over policy differences and that major GMO chemical companies are members of the Organic Trade Association, Nature's Path quits the organization as a protest to save organic. Now, for some people, having BASF, one of the world's most powerful chemical and GMO companies, as a member of the Organic Trade Association is not a problem. For Aaron Stevens, who is CEO and co-founder of the fiercely independent, family-owned Nature's Path, this was something that he could no longer tolerate. A combination of frustration with the OTA, or Organic Trade Association, over the years and the organization's willingness to accept hydroponics in organic but you know what? Hydroponics, I know people out here that do hydroponics and they're not doing the nasty ass stuff. And allowing non-organic members such as BASF, Cargill, Campbell's, and General Mills to have influence over the direction of the OTA were all reasons Nature's Path cited as reasons why it recently left the trade group. Our departure from OTA is an act of protest to raise awareness of our concern that the important role organic plays to support the health of consumers and our planet is being compromised. That's from Aaron Stevens. Now, as for the turbulent history with OTA, the decision to leave was hardly an impetuous one, and Nature's Path has been intimately involved with the organization for nearly two decades often at odds with its, with its policies and willingness to protect organic. 
Now, according to Nature's Path, Aaron Stevens had been on the OTA's board of directors from 1996 to 2002, but quit primarily because the organization was not taking the threat of GMOs seriously enough. He expressed his concerns to the OTA board more than once, warning that GMOs will become the greatest threat to the organic movement in the years ahead, and it's sad that we have to have an organic movement. Because, man, you get an organic movement, and you bet your sweet ass it's going to get infiltrated. Case in point. So when I resigned from the board, I was becoming somewhat battle fatigued and I felt that I and other rank and file OTA board members were being ignored by the executive committee. Well, yeah, because they were following the stench of money, whereas you guys were following the stench of natural fertilizer. At the 2001 OTA meeting at Natural Products Expo West in Anaheim, one of the executive committee members, who was also the CEO of Cascadian Farms, stated that the OTA wouldn't take a stand for or against GMOs. I whispered to my friend and industry activist Ken McCormick, I bet you anything Cascadian is selling out. And sure enough, Later that very morning, it was announced that Cascadian Farms had been acquired by General Mills. Yay. GM. Government. Mills. Now, despite Stephen's departure from the Board of Directors, Nature's Path continued as a member of OTA until now. BASF, which is a German conglomerate with operations around the world, is a major player in GMO seeds and super toxic chemicals as well. <clears throat> One of its primary chemicals is a next generation herbicide called dicamba, and it's sprayed on genetically engineered crops that are resistant to dicamba. But... The volatile nature of this chemical has made it very prone to drift, which has resulted in millions of acres of damaged crops. So, despite the fact that dicamba has been linked to increased rates of cancer in farmers and birth defects, it's expected that tens of millions of acres will be sprayed with dicamba over the next few years. And this will have catastrophic consequences for pollinators insects that are vital to our food supply. Now BASF wants to use its genetically modified product in organic. So even though dicamba is not allowed to be sprayed on organic crops, BASF's biopolymers division, which is a member of the Organic Trade Association, is attempting to get special approval for its biodegradable mulch from the National Organic Standards Board. You want biodegradable mulch? Go to a farmer. If they've got straw or hay bales, save your yard clippings. Go around to people that mow their yards. Save their yard clippings and get you some compost bins going. Don't support, you know, the best way to get rid of a system that is not supportive of you is to not support it. Now, <clears throat> at the NOSB, or National Organic Standards Board meeting in April in Tucson, Ruth Watts, a business development manager for BASF's biopolymers division, acknowledged that Genetically modified organisms are used as a processing aid in its bio-based mulch for which it is seeking approval. She claimed that the GMOs do not survive the production process and are not in the final product, so they are not a farm input. GMOs are illegal in organic production. And you know, last time they said that, we're starting to get evidence, although it is being suppressed, it's being found over in Europe, and then those people are being hushed up and evidence is destroyed, 
that this does carry on down the food chain. Now, David Mortensen, who is a PhD professor of weed and applied plant ecology at Penn State University and a current, and a current NOSB board member, listened to Ruth Watts' public testimony in Tucson and said to her, I was driving back from Washington, D.C. last week when one of your colleagues called in, and I was coming back from the dicamba drift discussion, a closed door discussion, where I heard multiple organic farmers say that they're on the verge of not being able to grow their crops because of dicamba drift, which is manufactured by BASF. I guess I'm trying to reconcile a corporate ethic that wants to sell a product for organic production on one hand and is selling a product that's being used on about 50 million acres of cropland on the other hand. Could you just help me see the corporate ethic where there's consistency here? It's called covering both ends of the equation. So no matter how things go, they make the money. Now, I don't even know what this product is that you've been talking about, answered Ruth Watts, claiming that she had no idea what her company's prominent chemical was. But just to be clear, dicamba is a herbicide. It will be used because Monsanto and BASF are working together to have 50 million acres treated this coming summer. Yay! Monsanto and BASF working together. Wow, that's a marriage made in hell. And it would be worth discussing, said David Mortensen. Really? It would? So, when asked to comment about BASF's membership in OTA, CEO Executive Director Laura Bacha said BASF is a non-voting business associate member because they don't sell any organic products. No, they do not. No, they do not. And they are looking to enter the organic market with a bio-based product that would meet NOSB standards. Uh-huh. It is a product that would be that would replace a lot of plastic being used in organic. Well, you know what? I don't use plastic either, so cardboard, you could use cardboard, but you got to be careful with that as well. Ah. <sighs> I tell you. They are trying to cover every single angle out there. That way, whichever way the political wind blows, they have their asses covered and they will still make money. And usually it will be at someone else's expense. Who are they? The owners of the companies. The, and, you know, I don't know uh, what. Dun, dun, dun. What are you guys talking about? Okay. Put this over on effing site. <sighs> I'm being annoying. Am I being annoying and pretentious enough? I'm just checking. Okay. Now that I've gotten to those two. Um, here we go. I was talking about Rockefeller. And here we go. So, I knew I had, I had something in my pocket. So this is from worldtruth.tv. How Rockefeller found Big Pharma and destroyed natural cures. Which he hasn't destroyed them, but oh my god. They are on the mat. It has been said that the Rockefeller family has affected modern society to a degree, but what most do not realize is just how much they have made an impact. The family name has now been linked to the suppression of natural medicine to found big pharmaceutical companies and make big money. And man, the picture of this guy is like, oh my lord, that's just nasty. 
Now the West has the best and most profitable health care in the world, so they say. The West is the home to some of the best health care in the world. Anyone in an emergency which needs prompt medical treatment is better off than those living elsewhere. Mm -hmm. In the West, people receive health care that is much better than what is offered in an establishing nation. However, it is often overlooked that health care is now a multi-trillion dollar industry in the West. So it's the best money can pay for or that your money will uh, allow you to have access to because, well, you know, there are others that have more money than you. Now, the mainstream medicine of today is based on treating people who are ill with drugs, radiation, and operations that are very pricey. What many people do not realize is that the Rockefeller family was the first to recognize the opportunity to take full advantage of what has become an ecosystem with huge profits. So anyone questioning Big Pharma is branded as a quack and a conspiracy theorist. Uh-huh. And today we live in a world of social media censorship and anyone who even dares to quench question the intentions of any of the big pharmaceutical companies is branded insane and given the label of crazed conspiracy theorist. Any information brought forward about recovery, um, about recovery residential or commercial properties of holistic practices and plants that cannot be patented are branded phony news as they are considered to um, threats to the drugs of the big pharmaceutical companies. Wow, you guys, that didn't flow real good. So, John D. Rockefeller realized the opportunity first. He was an oil mogul who was the first person in the USA to become a billionaire. And by the start of the 20th century, he had 90% control over oil refineries in the U.S. with his company Standard Oil. In 1900, researchers came across petrochemicals, and they found out that it was possible to make many chemicals out of oil. The first was plastic, which was Bakelite, and was made in 1907 from oil. Now, the turning point came when researchers found out that vitamins could be produced from oil and presumed pharmaceutical drugs. This was a financially rewarding opportunity for Rockefeller as he concluded that he could monopolize not only the oil business, but also chemical and medical industries. Petrochemicals were a new discovery that could be patented and which would bring about maximum revenues. The only thing stopping Rockefeller was the fact that herbal and natural remedies were popular in the USA at that time. About half of the medical professionals in the U.S. were practicing holistic medicine. This was based on understandings from the Europeans and Native Americans. And this meant that Rockefeller had to get rid of what was significant competition. He made use of a strategy that was time-proven problem-reaction-solution. And the concept works when developing an issue that would bring terror to people and then offer them a solution that was pre-planned. So we got the help of Andrew Carnegie. Yeah, yeah, another philanthropist. Philandering philanthropist. They were screwing everybody they could, not necessarily physically, not in necessarily in a sexual way. Now, he had made lots of money monopolizing the steel industry. And the Carnegie Foundation sent Abraham Flexner on a trip around the nation, and he was given the task of reporting the status of medical facilities along with the medical colleges in the United States. This led to the Flexner Report, and this eventually led to modern medication of today. 
Now that report stated that a revamp was needed along with the centralization of medical institutions. Following the report, half of the medical colleges were closed down. Natural medications and homeopathy were um, rubbished and some of the medical professionals who practiced holistic medicine were sent to prison. Rockefeller gave over $100 million to medical facilities and colleges to help with the transition and to try to change the minds of doctors and researchers. And the General Education Board was also founded. And you've got to remember, it only takes a generation to affect change, either for good or for ill. Now, not long after the medical colleges became homogenized and structured and students realized that medicine utilized drugs that were patented, scientists were also given huge grants to study recovery, residential or commercial properties of different plants and how they were able to cure diseases. In other words, pulling out different components of the whole, selling it as a drug, and it doesn't really fix the problem. It just treats the symptom and probably gives you more symptoms to boot. So <clears throat> what they were really doing was finding the chemicals in the plants, <clears throat> excuse me, and then recreating the compound so that it could be patented. And I know I used to think, wow, that's just amazing. And then I did started doing some research and went, wow, that's just wrong. So 100 years later, and medical colleges produce doctors who do not know anything about holistic practices or the many benefits that herbs have to offer. The government in the United States invests 15% of the gross domestic item or of the gross domestic item in mainstream health care and this is a system focusing on symptoms and it produces a flurry of repeat paying customers that is never ending because you know what if you die off odds are someone else is going to make another to replace you so despite much advancement in medicine, there is still no cure for cancer or diabetes or autism or asthma or even the common cold. No, there are not cures for any of that stuff, but there are tools and fuel in the natural world that you can give to your body that will help it treat itself. Now, John D. Rockefeller was even behind the establishment of the American Cancer Society in 1913. So, you see here where it's all, and connect the dots for yourself. I mean, I've been snooping around and poking at this bear for several years now, and yeah, he's a vile looking creature. Okay. Wow, that Vince Foster, he was an overachiever, wasn't he? Who shared that good one, Grim? Hmm. Okay. Now that I, oh, I need to put that over here. You know those people that are, I, you know, I was watching Forensic Files, is it today or yesterday? And you know that they actually have suicidologists, you know, people that come in and investigate when a suicide really doesn't look like a suicide. Man, there must only be like one or two of those people in the whole world because there's an awful lot of these quote unquote suicides out here that wow they really need a suicidologist to come and tell them yo dude no he didn't no no didn't happen the way you're trying to tell us hmm okay 
I think I'm going to, nope, I need this one. And I need the stinking flies. That one. Okay. Yeah, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about or mumbling to myself about, come on over to Freedoms Network and uh, join in. And then you can see the posts and see the little emoticons that I use. Because, yeah, I have fun playing with those. Okay. So, back to my pocket I go. Um... Okay, which one do I want to go to? Not that one, not that one. Um, I think I'll go with this one. Because, you know, mm, the world is nuts. It really, it's a, it's a wackadoodle kind of world. And this is from PatriotRising.com. <clears throat> It's the mass dementia in the Western establishment, which, yeah, we are, suf we are all suffering from dementia or delusion or Stockholm syndrome or whatever you wish to call it. We all got it. So, where to begin to analyze the madness of mainstream media in reaction to the Trump-Putin meeting in Helsinki. Oh, I see. I just saw mass dimension in Western establishment and thought this could be interesting, but it's about Trumples and Putin. Hmm, that's what I get for not reading it ahead of time, huh? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, by focusing on the individual, psychology has neglected the problem of mass insanity, which has now overwhelmed the United States establishment its mass media, and most of its copycat European subsidiaries. And the individuals may be sane, but as a herd, they are ready to leap off the cliff. So, for the past two years, a particular power group has sought to explain away its loss of power, or rather, its loss of the presidency, and is still holds the predominance of institutional power by creation of a myth. Mainstream media is known for its herd behavior, and in this case, the editors, commentators, journal, and journalists have talked themselves into a story that initially they themselves could hardly take seriously, because the Russians did it. Them damn communist pinko spies. Yeah, Trump was selected by Russia. Uh-huh. On the face of it, this is preposterous. Okay, the United States can manage to rig elections in Honduras or Serbia or even the Ukraine, but the United States is a bit too big and complex to leave the choice of the presidency to a barrage of electronic messages totally unread by most voters. Oh, and if you really, really want to go along with that, mm, you know, too big and too complex... That just means that it's going to get tripped up a lot easier. So, if this were so, Russia wouldn't need to try to undermine our democracy. It would mean that our democracy was already undermined, in tatters, basically dead. It's a standing corpse ready to be knocked over by a tweet. Actually, yeah, can you smell it? It's rotting. It really is. The only thing that's holding it up is we, the people, propping it up. So even if, as is alleged without evidence, an army of Russian bots, even bigger than the notorious or Israeli army of bots, was besieging social media with its nefarious slanders against poor, innocent Hillary Clinton, this could determine an election only in a vacuum with no other influences in the field. Hmm. But there was a lot of other stuff going on in 2016 election. Some for Trump, some for Hillary. And Hillary herself scored a crucial own goal by denigrating millions of Americans as deplorables because they didn't fit into her identity politics constituencies. Now the Russians could do nothing to build support for Trump. 
and there is not a hint of evidence that they tried. And really, do you really think that, really? They might have done something to harm Hillary because there was so much there. You know, the private server emails and the Clinton Foundation and the murder of Muammar Gaddafi and the call for a no-fly zone in Syria. They didn't even have to invent anything. It was there already. She laid it out for them. There was hanky-panky at the Democratic National Committee on which the Clintonite accusations focus and perhaps to cause everyone to forget much worse things. Oh, and then there was Seth Rich. Yeah, let's not forget Seth. Yeah, when you come to think of it, the DNC scandal focused on Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Ooh. Debbie does DNC uh, and not on Hillary herself. Screaming about Russian hacking the DNC has been a distraction from much more serious accusations against Hillary. Bernie Sanders supporters didn't need those revelations to make them stop loving Hillary or even to discover that the DNC was working against Bernie. It was always perfectly obvious. And yet how many people jumped for that carrot that was dangling. Damn Russians! Because Russians are the boogeyman of the month again. Spin that wheel! Yep, at worst, the Russians are accused of revealing some relatively minor facts concerning the Hillary Clinton campaign. Big whoop! But that is enough, after two years of fakery, to send the establishment into a frenzy of accusations of treason when Trump does what he said he would do while campaigning. Try to normalize relations with Russia. You know, you really don't want to pick a fight with the other superpower or the other recognized superpower, although China's coming in pretty damn close. Now, this screaming comes not only from the U.S. corporate lame-ass propaganda system, but also from the European elite, which has been housebroken for 70 years as obedient little poodles, dachshunds, or corgis in the American menagerie. This is via intense vetting by the U.S. Transatlantic Cooperation Associations. And they have based their careers on the illusion of sharing the world empire by following U.S. whims in the Middle East and transforming their mission of their armed forces from defense into foreign intervention units of NATO under U.S. command. Doesn't that just give you a warm and fuzzies, like right before you puke? So, having not thought seriously about the implications of this for over half a century, they panic at the suggestion of being left to themselves. Aww. And the Western elite is now suffering from self-inflicted dementia. Trumples is not particularly articulate, navigating through the language with a small repetitive vocabulary, but what he said at his Helsinki press conference was honest and even brave. As the hounds pay, um, bay for his blood, he quite correctly refused to endorse the findings of U.S. intelligence agencies. I think that's an oxymoron right there. U.S. intelligence agencies. Yeah, 14 years after those same agencies found that Iraq was bursting with weapons of mass destruction. How in the world could anyone expect anything else? I don't know. I didn't hear his Helsinki press conference. I, I have a hard time considering Trumpel's brave. But eh, that's just me. Now, the mainstream media, the story at the Helsinki summit, even the only story, was Trump's reaction to the um, trumped-up charges of Russian interference in our democracy. How many... How many, quote-unquote, democracies have we interfered with throughout the years? Project much? So, when you, um, 
were you or were you not elected thanks to Russian hackers? Mm, no. No. All they wanted was a yes or no answer, which could not possibly be yes, so they could write their reports in advance. Now, anyone who has frequented mainstream journalists, especially those who cover the big stories on international affairs, is aware of their obligatory conformism, with few exceptions. Now, to get the job, one must have important sources, meaning government spokesmen who are willing to tell you what the story is, often without being identified because they are not authorized to speak on the record. And once they know what the story is, competition sets in. Excuse me. Competition as to how to tell it. Basically, where you want to put your inflection because you're given a script and you must read the script. I'm not real good at that in case you haven't noticed. Now, that leads to an ex escalation of rhetoric, variations on the theme, such as, the president has betrayed our country to the Russian enemy, treason. Really? Hmm. Ah, uh, no. No. Now, this demanded chorus on Russian hacking prevented corporate lame -ass propaganda system from even doing their job not even mentioning much less, an, much less analyzing any of the real issues at the summit. To find analysis, one must go online, away from the official spewage agencies to independent reporting. For example, the Moon of Alabama site offers an intelligent interpretation of the Trump strategy. Okay, I haven't read that one, but what the heck. And it sounds infinitely more plausible than the story. So in short, Trump is trying to woo Russia away from China in a reverse conver uh, version of Kissinger's strategy 40 years ago to woo China away from Russia, thus avoiding the continental alliance against the United States. Now this may not work because U.S., has proven so untrustworthy that the cautious Russians are highly unlikely to abandon their alliance with China. Yeah, I can't see them doing it. I'm thinking they're saying, sure, with their hand behind their back and their fingers crossed. But it makes perfect sense as an explanation of Trump's policy. So unlike the caterwauling that we've been hearing from senators and talking heads on CNN. Those people seem to have no idea what diplomacy is about. They cannot conceive of agreements that would be beneficial to both sides. No, it's got to be a zero-sum game, winner takes all, and if they win, we lose, and vice versa. You know, there are win-win situations. Most of the time, you just have to shut the hell up. Sometimes shutting up and walking away is a win. So, they also have no idea of the harm to both sides if they do not agree. And they have no project, no strategy, just hate Trump. Well, I don't care for him either, but eh. He seems totally isolated, and every morning I look at the news to see if he's been assassinated yet. Yeah, you know, I actually did that with... Uh, Obama, because, yeah, I thought, oh, my God, Joe Biden is the best insurance policy ever because nobody wants Uncle Joe in that seat. Which is why he didn't choose Hillary for his running mate, because he knew he wouldn't last the first year. So, this goes on quite a bit, but, you know, I'm bored with it because I really could give a shit less about all of that. Because it's all stuff and nonsense. It's gotten over 15 minutes. That's a plenty. I'm done. So. Um, Vinivus. Vinny Venus. Vinny Venus. That's what you are now. Okay. Good one, Vinny. Okay. Put this over here and just, yeah, it's, yeah. 
That's not as fun as I thought it was. I really should start kind of doing a little bit of a pre-read. You know, like at least the first chapter. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. This is another crazy one. And I, I got to get back to the... This is where I'm more interested. Um, it's from January of this year. And I need to check and see um, if there's any updates on it. I haven't, and I apologize. Of course, I don't pre-read either, so I just saw the headline. Um, this is according to the Kansas City Star. Um, a Missouri couple bought 115 pounds of ginseng, and they face five years in prison for that, for ginseng. Wait, there's more. An Ozarks couple could go to prison for five years for purchasing about 115 pounds of ginseng. Kermit J. Schofield, 76, and his wife Sandy Schofield, 73, pleaded guilty last week to illegally trafficking the plant, which is protected from extinction by an international treaty and state regulations that the Schofields violated and the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Missouri stated this in its release. Now, if ginseng is a plant that is protected from extinction by an international treaty, why are people even able to purchase the plant or even ginseng extracts? If it's protected from extinction, that's the first question that popped into my head. Apparently, the couple run a business, Showfield Roots and Herbs, from their home in Theodosia, Missouri, near the Arkansas border. Now, aside from wild American ginseng, they also sold bloodroot, echinacea, vinegar, uh, Virginia snake root, and other roots and herbs. So, from 2013 to 2015, the Schofields made multiple purchases of ginseng in Arkansas and transported it to Missouri without obtaining a certification required to do so. You do not have the proper documentation. In other words, you did not grease the proper palms in order to take a route from one state to the next, even though you just live across the state line. <clears throat> They also purchased the plant outside of the six-month window from mid-September to mid-March, during which Missourians can legally buy it in dried form outside the state. So apparently the Show Me State says that, well, you know, you can have ginseng, but you can only buy it during this time frame because if you buy it outside of this time frame, well, you don't have the proper documentations. That's insane. That's insane. Now, the Schofield spent about 26000 on ginseng purchases in Arkansas in 2013 and 2014. They then sold the illicit ginseng for about 42500 in Missouri. How do they know it's illicit ginseng? If they went during that window, then it's not illicit. So, apparently in 2015, they purchased approximately $22,000 of ginseng, which was ultimately seized by investigators, and you know what they're going to do with it, don't you? And when reached by phone, Sandy Schofield declined to comment, citing the pending court case, and the couple's attorney could not immediately be reached. Now, the plant is protected under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. And some people using ginseng to treat medical conditions and believe it increases energy and mental, mental faculties. Um, but evidence supporting such benefits is inconclusive. Why? Because you can't patent ginseng, but you can make it protected under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Apparently, the Schofields knowingly violated state regulations and falsified records, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. 
Kermit Schofield, who agreed to pay $65,615 to the Arkansas State Plant Board and a $5,000 federal fine. And the couple will be sentenced at a later date. So, as you see, he agreed to pay seventy grand. Is this not an extortion racket? I think it is. It's knuckin' futz. That's all there is to it. The show me state has shown me how knuckin' futz they truly are. That is absolutely insane. But, you know, it's protected. And you can only buy it at certain times of the year. Whereas cannabis is illegal in most states. And federally illegal. Worse than heroin. Because it's bad juju. Because, well, it, yeah. They do have Frankenpot, though. I would not recommend trying it. You might get bolts out your neck and start turning green. Scary shit when Big Pharma gets involved. Okay. This one just, this one just flat ass pisses me off. It's like, are you kidding me, you assholeos? Okay. Now, there is one other that I wanted to get to. Um, actually, there's several of them um, that I wanted to get to, but mm, how about this one? Because, you know, it's from um, selfhelphealing.co.uk, and it's the pineal gland, the third eye, and the crystal in your head. Now, a lot of times people don't realize that uh, the consumption of fluoride in the water, that uh, causes hardening of the pineal gland. They know this. That's just one of the things that causes that. So, did you know that you have a crystal inside of your head? Well, I bet you didn't. You've probably heard about the pineal gland, however, or what it is also commonly known as the third eye, and it's true. It actually contains crystals, which explains a lot. Now, the picture is um, on the top of this is the Egyptian eye of Horus, or the eye of Ra, as it's also called, and it represents the third eye, or the pineal gland, and this symbol was commonly drawn on the foreheads of Egyptian sailors before they went to sea to protect them and keep them safe. Interestingly, the design of the Eye of Ra is an identical representation of, of the pineal gland. If you look at it from the little diagram that they have right below there. Because it has the thalamus, the corpus callosum, the medulla and the hypothalamus, all of them different parts of. In any case, the Egyptians were far more advanced spiritually and esoterically than much of today's society, and they held this symbol in high regard and valued its importance. Now, with modern science, we can now shed even further light on the pineal gland as we take a more scientific look at the third eye. The uh, pineal gland is made from crystal, and the word crystal comes from the Greek word krystalos, which means frozen light. There are many spiritual and healing practices that use crystals for meditation and healing work, and it's an interesting development to learn that we, have, we too have crystals inside our brain within the pineal gland. So, there's an article from the National Institutes of Health which states, A new form of biomineralization has been studied in the pineal gland of the human brain. It consists of small crystals that are less than 20 micro, uh, micron in length and that are completely distinct from the often observed mulberry type hydro... Okay, 
some kind of concretions. And a special procedure was developed to isolate the crystals from the organic matter in the pineal gland. The cubic, hexagonal, and cylindrical morphologies have been identified as scanning elect or using a scanning electron microscope. And the crystal edges were sharp, whereas their surfaces were very rough. Now, energy, energy dispersive spectro, spectroscopy showed that the crystals contained only the elements calcium, carbon, and oxygen. The selected area electron um, diffraction and near infrared Raman spectroscopy established that the crystals were calcite. With the exception of the otoconia structure of the inner ear, this is the only known non-pathological occurrence of calcite in the human body. And the calcite microcrystals are probably responsible for the previously observed second harmonic generation of pineal tissue sections. Okay. Now the complex structure or texture structure of the microcrystals may lead to the crystallographic symmetry breaking and possible piezoelectricity. Where do they come up with these words? As is the case with the autoconia. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I guess I don't. And it's believed that the presence of the two different crystalline compounds in the pineal gland is biologically significant, suggesting two entirely different mechanisms of formation and biological function. In other words, scientists are going to use big gobbledygook words in order to make themselves sound more important when people <sighs> in the olden, in days of yore, just knew, hey, it's crystals it's for communicating. Now, the studies directed towards the elucidation of the formation and functions and possible non-thermal interaction with external electromagnetic electromagnetic fields are currently in progress. Wow. Oh, thank you, because right now the next line is right. That was a mouthful. I know. Yeah, it was, honey. Thank you. I stumbled multiple times. So what this is basically saying is that the pineal gland is made from calcite crystals and that these crystals interact with electromagnetic fields originating from outside of your head. This quote also states that the pineal gland responds to such external electromagnetic fields and creates an electrical charge in what is known as the uh, piezoelectricity effect. Okay? So your third eye is quite literally an energy generating machine that is capable of creating and holding a charge. Huh, are you starting to see why that fluoride's starting to really kick into, yeah, we need to fluoridate these people. So the reference to the pineal gland being the third eye is also quite interesting, considering the anatomy of the pineal gland. It has a lens, a cornea, and retina that reacts to the presence of light. Which means the third eye is actually a third eye. And who would have thought that you have a crystal third eye inside your brain? Now, in addition to the light detected by the eyes, research now shows that the whole body acts as a receptor to light. Light shining on any part of the body can be detected, which signals to the pineal gland to stop producing melatonin hormone. That's, okay, that makes sense. Because I was sleeping downstairs for a couple of nights last week because it's a lot cooler down there. And I have a little nightlight thing that I had entirely too close. And I didn't sleep for shit. <laughs> you know, it makes sense. Okay. So this is why it's important to sleep in complete darkness so we can proper regulate our sleeping. Thank you. Yeah, now I read this. And we rarely receive the sleep, uh, deep relaxation that only occurs in complete darkness. So, 
make a point of only meditating in complete darkness, which will increase the activity of your pineal gland and aid your meditative practice. Oh, I don't know that I want to meditate in complete darkness. I would much rather meditate outside. Hmm. Okay, it goes on to say that darkness triggers an increase of production of melatonin and eventually DMT, which is your body's natural psychoactive compound that causes spiritual experiences, visions, and out-of-body experiences. I have had the visions, I've had the spirit, and I've, I've had a couple of out-of-body experiences, and they were like, dude, man, the girls are going nuts tonight. My chat on my phone. Okay, back to. So, it is kind of interesting, isn't it, that the third eye, what it actually does. So, <clears throat> the pineal gland is a small bean-sized gland in the shape of a pine cone, and is responsible for regulating the endocrine system, producing melatonin and regulating your sleep, mood, and stress. And this is a vitally important hormone, not only for regulating sleep cycles and health, but also for aiding deep meditation. Inside the pineal gland are tiny little calcite crystals, and these crystals are known to produce bioluminescence which is a form of light without heat. And this explains why colors and visions can be experienced during meditation or in healing sessions and ener energy channeling because the pineal gland is reacting to the increased presence of electromagnetic energy within the body and the brain. Wow. Now I mentioned that the third eye is an energy machine that can create this and store energy, and it surely can. Theoretically, everything in the universe is electromagnetic, or as far as we can tell anyway. And the calcite crystals within the pineal have their own uh, piezoelectric effect, which means your third eye responds to electromagnetic energies from outside your body and it produces its own electromagnetic energy as a result. So, your third eye has a direct connection with your surrounding environment and is capable of interacting with the electromagneti electromagnetism of your environment, body, and brain. As above, so below. Hmm. So, electromagnetism from your environment alters the electromagnetism of your pineal gland. However, the reverse is also true. The electromagnetism of your pineal gland has a direct influence on the electromagnetism of your surrounding environment. Your pineal gland can quite literally interact with and change your physical environment. And you know, I was just reading about that in my Anastasia book. I think I'm on book five yet. I just read at night. So, um, let's see, where was I at? So, it's known that the pineal gland can generate its own magnetic field, and this magnetic field interacts with the environment and the Earth's electromagnetic field. It's commonly taught that the time around sunrise between 6 or 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. is the best time to meditate, and this is because the solar wind charges the earth magnetic field, which then stimulates the pineal gland. So, you can get much more out of your meditation and spiritual practice by channeling or meditating around this time. If I get up that early, sorry. Although I do have some really wild and woolly dreams just before I wake up, so maybe that's what's going on. Now, doc Dr. Marcel Vogel, who was a research scientist who exclusively studied quartz and other crystals, came to research the relationship between crystals and water. And he discovered that he could structure water by spinning it around a tuned crystal. 
altering many of the characteristics of the water and converting it into an information storage system. This is why crystals are used in so many electronic systems today. And Dr. Marcel also demonstrated that crystalline growth could be modified by human thought waves and that the energy of love had a direct influence of crystalline growth. Cool. Now the energy of love and your pineal gland work together as one complete unit of creative potential. So interestingly, this reflects the research done by the late Dr. Um, Masaru Emoto, and I've seen several of his docu documentary kind of things, who showed how human consciousness can intentionally and unintentionally affect the molecular structure of water by using intention and the power of thought. The crystalline structure of the pineal gland is seen to be the main contributor to this interaction between our consciousness and our environment. Now your thought and intention is a form of energy and every thought has a different frequency. This means different thoughts interact with your environment in different ways. And as psychologists are all too aware, and because thought and intention is a form of energy, it can be picked up, stored, and transmitted by crystals, such as the crystals within the pineal gland. Just as crystals are used in today's modern world, and can be used to hold information on a computer system, they can also be used to hold information from thought too. And this is why it's possible to charge crystals with loving healing thoughts and intentions and for it to heal our minds, bodies, and beings. So what you think, what you intend, the words you speak, and what you believe are all of great importance because that energy is stored within the crystals of your pineal gland. Unconditional love is a powerful energy and with that energy you can raise the energy of your pineal gland, your body, your mind, and being so your brain waves and consciousness expand into a greater sphere of awareness. By expanding your awareness with practices such as Reiki, you can begin to assess the information stored within your pineal gland and begin to understand how this tiny crystalline organ within your brain connects you to the stars, the universe, and the very creative source of life itself. So enlightenment isn't a place. It's the birth of light within. I like that. I like that. That is much better than some of this other nonsensical crap that's going on in the world. Oh, Grimmy. What's that? Hmm. Oh, Moosey, I know crystals have healing properties. I know they do. And you know, um, if you've got crystals and uh, you can, you've got the full moon coming up, <clears throat> you need to put them in like a glass bowl or a crystal or something like that and put them in the windowsill so that they'll get moonlight and that will clean them for you. Yep. Agreed, Moosey. Doggies do love unconditionally. I have a slinky dog and a, a big-eyed pretty girl that, yeah. Even if I don't feed them for a couple hours late, they still come up with the slinky dog thing and the waggy tail and the bouncy around and, Mommy, 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 you're here. You will feed us, right? Yes, I will feed you. Okay. Now, it's getting close time. I need to go check out the pig, see what happened. On this date in history, besides the fact that my mommy was born, this date in history, 
and the world was never the same after that because she went forth and procreated. Lots and lots and lots. Okay, we'll do this one, and we'll do... Hmm. Okay. Where's the pig? P.I. double gut er. What? There it is. My start page got rearranged. <gasps> Yay! They did update it! Yay! Yes. Okay, over here on the pig. Let me see what their pick of the day is. It's a gummy bear. What is that? Aww. This is sad. It is a sad pick of the day. Darn it. Okay. So, word of the day is gratitude. The feeling we here at the Free State of Pig frequently experience every time we pause and remind ourselves that an awesome, kick-ass country we live in, complete with fruited plains, the one and only land of the free and home of the brave, the United States of America. Okay, boys, if you think so, you go right ahead. Uh... Thanks, Moosey. I will tell Mom. Okay, in their quotable quotes, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah. So, okay. Apparently they have a message from Gene Simmons on here. I'm ashamed to be surrounded by people calling themselves liberal who are, in my opinion, spitting on the graves of brave American soldiers who gave their life to fight a war that wasn't theirs in a country they've never been to simply to liberate the people they're in. I wasn't born here, but I have a love for this country and its people that know no knows no bounds. I will forever be grateful to America for going into the World War or into World War II when it had nothing to gain in a country that was far away and rescued my mother from Nazi German concentration camps. She is alive and I am alive because of America. And if you have a problem with America, you have a problem with me. Gene Simmons. Thank you, Gene. So, do I want to do... Hmm... I don't think I do. So, this date in history, the 25th of July, 1861, way before my mom was born, the Crittenden Resolution, calling for the American Civil War to be fought to preserve the Union and not for slavery, is passed by Congress. Psst! Don't tell low IQ Maxine Waters. Yeah, well, it wouldn't do any good because she wouldn't understand it anyway. This date in history, the 25th of July, 1903, still way before my mom was born, English author and visionary George Orwell was born. Hey, hey, I'll have to tell mom that's a birthday twin. And finally, this date in history, the 25th of July, 1950, the Korean War begins as North Korea invades South Korea. And we stick our nose in the middle of their business. So, um, okay, I'm going to read this one real quick because it's Dr. Hurd, so let's check this shit out, okay? Is capitalism slavery or is socialism? Um, if it's got ism on the end, I'm thinking it's slavery. So, from Dr. Hood, I love socialists. Why? Because they ask the fundamental questions. I hate socialists, too. Why? Because they give the wrong answers. <laughs> Socialist congre congressional candidate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez recently asked, Are we going to be a slave state or are we going to be a free state? 
Now, she meant to imply that socialism is freedom and capitalism is slavery. Most people operate in the center. They eschew the ideological arguments in favor of splitting the difference. And that's why we have partial capitalism and partial socialism in America. The controls, the regulations, the subsidies, the high taxes, Medicare, Social Security, federal education, those are socialism. The smartphones, the computers, the choices in entertainment, clothing, cars, groceries, restaurants, music, and sports on a scale no other society has ever seen, those are capitalism. If you love Medicare, Obamacare, public schools, and high taxes, and you want all of society to be liking those things, as they already are in North Korea, Cuba, and Venezuela, then socialism is your choice. If you prefer the comforts only capitalism and economic liberty can provide, then you ought to, be, ought to consider consistent capitalism instead of the hybrid version we now experience. Ocasio-Cortez is asking the right question, but she's giving the wrong answer. Capitalism means the freedom to choose. No billionaire under capitalism gets, gets that way by coercing money from others. Every customer pays their mon uh, money voluntarily. Um, that's gray area. Lots of gray area in there. Politicians, on the other hand, get everything through force pull, and usually lots of lying. So if you like force, pull, fraud, and lying, then socialism is your choice. So you can join Ocasio-Cortez in her battle to deliver us all into slavery and then try to call it freedom. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hurd. That's over on PIGazette.com. Go on over there, check it out, say hey to the boys. And then, <coughs> since I have a little bit of time here, this is from uh, Capitano Zano Vinny. It's from thepowerofsilence.co. 17 fucks you should finally stop giving when you're a grown and mature person. Thank you, Vinny. I hope I have time for this. So we arrive in this world completely clueless, expecting life to be this pinky utopian place where justice is always served, milk flows instead of rivers, and people are actually nice to each other. And if you ask me, that is a place I truly wish to be in. Not me, not me, because wow, milk flowing in rivers? No, that would get to stinking after a while. But... What you're about to experience is a lot different. Very quickly, you start to realize that the consequences of your existence are actually difficult and painful. You become accustomed to the constant stress. You worry about everything and everyone. Anxiety becomes a part of your life. And just like that, after a seriously long period of drama in your life, you finally realize that some fucks should not be given anymore. And in an attempt to make the world a better place and keep everyone happy, you only made your life more stressful than it is. Well, not anymore. Because some things just aren't worthy enough for you to stress over. Life is exactly what we make it. That responsibility lies with us. <coughs> Excuse me. So here are 17 fucks that you should finally stop giving when you're a grown and mature person. Number one, what others think, which is why I like being annoying and what was the other one? I can't remember, pompous. No, I don't know. I'm annoying though, yes! So when you start worrying so much about what others think or say about you, you're basically living your life for them. You care too much about your image and how they perceive you. People will always judge. Remember that. Number two, being right all the time. God, I am wrong so many times that I'm really used to it. You need to understand that you won't always be right about everything. Each person has his or her own set of beliefs and preferences. There's no such thing as normal. 
It is an illusion. What is normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. So just keep moving forward and don't give a shit about what anybody thinks. Do what you have to do for you. That's from Johnny Depp. The other one was from Charles Adams. Number three, having the perfect body. The perfect mesmerizing hot body is a lie. It's a marketing trick by the corporate tycoons. Just so we would buy their slimline products or expensive gadgets, accept your flaws, learn to love your body, you are beautiful. Number four, giving a damn whether you wear a four inch heels or sneakers. I do not do the four inch heels. I like my ankles the way they are. It is your goddamn style and you'll do as you please whether you decide to wear your mom's jeans or a mini skirt with high heels. It's still Friday night, so rock it. Number five, the past. What happened in the past might not be long forgotten, but it is gone. You can't change it. And you'll definitely waste your precious time stressing over it. So forgive yourself. Leave the past behind you and concentrate on the present moment. There's a reason why your rear view mirror is smaller than your windshield. Number six, giving a fuck about gossip. Learn to love your life and work hard for the things that you desire. Trashing someone behind their back is just childish, so don't waste your life on hate. And really, they're probably living a much more exciting life than I am, and I'm happy for them. Whatever. Number seven, worrying about people's approval. It's okay to listen and t uh, listen to an advice, but you should never make the mistake to ask someone for their approval. If you wait for someone's validation, it's likely you'll suffer from rejection. It's your life, damn it. Take some responsibility for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Number eight, the toxic people around you. So whatever you do, make sure to maintain safe and solid boundaries around you. And don't you ever give a single damn about those energy-sucking vampires. Leave them and promise yourself to never, ever look back. Number nine, giving a fuck about failures. Failures are difficult, but they're all part of the learning process. Don't be afraid to fail, and most importantly, don't let them discourage you. Pick yourself up and keep moving forward. A failure is just another lesson in life. Number 10, mandatory night outs on Friday night. Really? And why would you even sweat it? You could do whatever you want on a Friday night. That doesn't necessarily include a night out of bar hopping. Want to stay home and binge watch a series on Netflix? Eh, go for it. Friday night, I don't go out on Friday nights. Number one, it's nine miles to the closest. Nah. Um, country driving, by the way. Number 11, being worshipped on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> yeah. If you like to share something, for the love of God, just do it. But stop giving a fuck whether you have 100 or 1,000 likes. Share it because you want to. Don't allow yourself to become a slave to social media. Number 12, everything that you don't have. Yeah, there will always be people who have more than we do. And that shouldn't be intimidating to any of us. The grass shouldn't always be greener on the other side. Take care of your side and appreciate what you have. Number 13, seeking revenge. Don't waste your energy on revenge. I promise it won't make you feel as good as you think it would. You'll only feel more miserable because you've hurt someone. I, the best analogy I, can, I have ever read for re seeking revenge is when you wish to have revenge on someone, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Don't go there. Number 14, worrying about what ifs. The future is way ahead of you, so don't stress over its unpredictability. 
Instead, do everything in your power to make it a good one by focusing on the present moment. Number 15. Giving a damn about material possessions. Okay, money does feel nice, and we all want a bag full of millions of dollars. However, material possessions will never guarantee a happiness. Start building a memorable and happy life. Everything else will follow. Number 16. Being good enough for people. So what does good mean anyway? Is there a rule about how a person should behave in order to be accepted by the masses? The fact is, whatever you do, you will never be able to satisfy everyone out there. So you'll only be wasting your precious time and energy on earth. Start living your life the way you want to. And finally, number 17, regretting things. Learn to accept the things you did. It was your decision and you should show some responsibility for it. Stop having regrets. The past is gone and it is up to you to learn your lesson and continue your journey. Thank you, Vinny. That was excellent and there's some excellent links off to the side of this as well. Um, Capitano Zani. Thank you, Capitano Zani. That was so awesome. Yes, Moosey, normal is a setting on a washing machine and it is also a town in, town in Illinois. But the, I have never been there. I've always been to that junction on the highway where it's go right to go normal or go left to Milwaukee and every time I went left to Milwaukee so yeah I have never been to normal Illinois so okay and that reminds me you know all of this stress and worrying if it's something you know if if you're worried about something if it's something that you can do something about then why are you stressing out about it? If it's something that you can't do anything about, then why are you stressing out about it? So I'd watched a, a little video earlier today and the individual was asking, what's the most pleasing five letter word? And there were lots of people um, shouting out, all, you know, like money and sorry and you know, all kind of words that they were throwing out there. And one person said, smile. Smile is the most pleasing five-letter word. Because number one, if you smile, it makes people wonder what you're up to or what you've been up to, especially if it's a little smirky smile. And, oh sweet, your sister's having a baby on the, th yay! Baby will be my birthday twin, trust no one. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the other thing that a smile does is it, it, is in, it increases your face value. And I never really thought about it, but, you know, it also adds an awful lot of storylines to your face. These are my smile lines, and I've done an awful lot of smiling in my life, and I plan to do an awful lot more smiling. And one of the other things that he pointed out was, we don't all smile or continually laugh at the same jokes. So why do we continually cry or feel sad or anger over the same problem? Why don't we deal with it as well as we can deal with it and then move on, step away, let it go. I don't know. I'm just putting this out there. I know it's it's hard to it's hard to step past some of that stuff, but there is some that I have stepped past and then there's some that I have not. I will admit to that. Um What's this? Oh, there's one more quote here. In my life, have I have given a fuck about many people and many things. I have also not given a fuck about many people and many things. And those fucks I have not given have made all the difference in the world. That was from Mark Manson. Yep. 
because it saves some up for later when you really, really need them. Because I had some on back order for the longest time. I had none. So, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10. Also on the RLM Radio um, dot XYZ site, RLM Spreaker channel. Later to be on the RLM YouTube channel and the RLM BitChute channel. Um, Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Vinny's going to be on with the Ponder Gander. Yay, Vinny! Kick some butt, take names. He'll be kicking off the Freaker Friday festivities. And I will be on Friday evening for um, the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. The weekend is going to be full with all kinds of fun stuff, but I won't be around because I got family things to do this weekend. So um, I may even just log out as soon as I get done on Friday. You never know yet. But... Let's see, do I have one more thing I need to do? Because I do have a couple minutes yet to, uh, let's see, what's that? That's right, smile for a while and let's be happy. (laughs) And yes, cowboy, make a difference and then smile. And you know, sometimes smiling is all the difference you need to make. Because sometimes that's all a person needs is for you to make eye contact and smile. And let them know they're enough. You know, every day, do your best at being you with the goal of being a little bit better or not being worse than the day before. And recognize You are enough. You are you, and no one else can be youer than you. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. I still have some sunlight out there, so I'm going to go play in my garden for a bit. And uh, where's the cowbell? Where's the cowbell? We need (laughs) cowbell. Y'all have an awesome rest of your evening. I will catch you later in the funny papers. Oh, no go for writing. Okay. Uh, Vinny will not be on Friday for the radio. So there will not be a Ponder Gander Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. So thanks, y'all, for listening in. And please remember, I really do love you all. Don't necessarily like y'all, but I love you all. I know you're here for a reason, and you're doing that reason. And I wish you all enough. Good night.